Hello and welcome to another Red9 demo. Uh, thanks for watching. Today we're going to be going through quite a big update in the Red9 Pro Pack, um, and that includes a new tool called the Transfer Deformation Stack, which sounds quite technical, but it's really not. It's to do with transferring skinning and blend shapes between objects where you'd normally struggle doing so. Um, it's something we've used extensively on the recent TV and film work that we've been doing, and we thought it's about time we exposed it to all. So, uh, so let's take a look. So um, in this scene, we've got a fairly simple facial rig. Uh, this is quite an old rig, so ignore the deformation on it. It's just there for, for demo purposes, really. Um, it's a joint and blend shape rig. So we have, if we select that, we have, there's a skin cluster, there's our blend shapes. And the blend shapes, it's a limited blend shape stack. Again, this is for, for demoing. Um, and it performs fairly well. Now, the whole purpose of this tool, which we find in ProPack, deformation transfer is to transfer skinning and the deformation from this object onto other objects now it might be that you've got um, you've remodeled your head you've already sculpted all your blend shapes you've remodeled it all the vert vert indexes are changed or you've got a lower res lot or you've got something you need to transfer over and all of a sudden you've got all these blend shapes that you can't transfer because the blend shapes are all vert index based so it becomes a problem and the same with skinning or slightly less so with skinning now the tool is designed to do one or two things. It's designed to work with game side of stuff, and it's also designed to work with the VFX side of stuff. And there's a slight difference in there. With games, you have a single skin cluster, you have a single blend shape, and that's generally the way everything works. With VFX, it doesn't matter. You can have multiple skin clusters feeding into multiple blend shapes, and that's generally how we've done the last couple of years worth of projects. Um, and we'll get onto that later on. It's slightly more complicated, so we'll, we'll try and skip that for the time being. I'm going to give you an overview today, so um, hopefully we'll do some more, slightly more simple uh, versions later on. So we have our head. We have a head, we have the UI open, and if we select the head that's got the deformation that we're interested in, and we do an inspect, you'll see we've got the skin cluster and we've got the blend shape. Now then, in this case, uh, what's happened is a model has come along and decided we need a beard on that character. Well, that's great. Um, transferring skinning between those two isn't rocket science. There are techniques to do it. It's not that hard. But transferring the blend shapes from this guy onto this is slightly more tricky. And this does it all for you. So effectively, we select the object with the deformation we want, click the button, select the deformers we want to transfer across. We select the object we want to transfer it over to. And then we have to decide, first of all, how are we mapping it? Are we mapping it index-based or are we mapping it coordinate-based? If we're mapping it index-based, it's assuming that vert1 in the vert1 is still vert1, vert2 is vert2, etc. And it is literally vert index-based, um, which in this case is going to be useless because obviously we've got a head and then we've got loads of little cars that make up the beard, so we can't do that. So we need to use coordinate space. Coordinate space is kind of a, a, um, it's a play within uh, closest um, closest point on eight on poly um, and it also uses barycentric coordinates to try and figure out the best um, data to, to take this across and it works well it's been rock solid for the last couple of years so we're going to go coordinate based um, front of chain effectively means that it's going to put the deformers at the very head of the deformation stack that we'll get into so we'll ignore that for the game side of stuff for the time being uh, this is the one that we will get onto later on it says vfx only it's not quite true, but you know, again, it's mainly the effect. So again, we'll leave, leave that one off. Deformer names, that's useful when you've got very complicated stacks. If you've got multiple blend shapes of multiple skin clusters, one might be called body skin cluster, one might be called facial, and you might want to retain that information. So that's what the map deformer names will do. It will retain these names within the transfer. Again, not that bothered about that in this one. What I am bothered about is the input connections. So if we look at the blend shape node, on the character you'll see we've got input connections to all of these blend shapes well those are obviously all coming from the facial rig and when we transfer the data we want to maintain those links because obviously we want the facial rig to drive the beard as well so we'll maintain those we say yes and then we have one here only targets where deltas alter sounds complicated but it's not effectively what it's doing is it's saying on this blend shape that we're about to transfer over all of this stuff do we want to transfer everything or do we want to transfer only the blend shapes where they would have an actual effect on that mesh so for example, the blink will have no effect on this bit. So there's no real point in transferring that across unless you want to maintain orders. So that's what this is going to do. We're going to say only targets where deltas alter. And there's a tolerance in there. This is a really tiny tolerance. So basically, if a vert doesn't move, 
then that if sorry if the blend shape doesn't affect any of the verts then that blend shape or that blend target won't get uh, transferred into this mesh we can if we want to pick specific meshes so it come into this and we go actually i only want to transfer the, the snare blend shapes or the narrow blend shapes etc so you can actually do separate things this again we'll probably get into in a different video um, the general rule of thumb is if the object that we're transferring to already has a blend shape then what we do is we try and match names we try and match indexes and we try and update what's in the current blend shape um, if we haven't got a blend shape we cr we create a new blend shape and everything's transferred one to one so it's quite good for updating things as well uh, again we'll get on to a different video so i'm just going to go transfer off it goes done now you'll see the blend shapes it's transferred it's skipped quite a few it's skipped things where it won't have an effect we said blink blinks no longer there so it's only picked the targets that actually will affect this beard and that beard is now live and running on the rig so everything that's in the deformation chain for the head has transferred over to the blend over to the um, beard we can do the same for the eyelashes we can do the same for the brows again just transfer that we can select the brows just go transfer bosh in this case we've only got what six blend shapes because those are the only ones that affect the brows so again it's it's cooled down what it needs to do and it's transferred the data across it might be that what we've actually had from a modeler is we've now got a combined mesh so maybe what's happened is that they've done a new mesh where they've combined everything into one because these are now part of the mesh and we want to transfer the data to that so again we get the head which is the source select the deformers we want go to the combined we're going to take that one off because we don't want to transfer only those we want to transfer everything in this case because it's a whole head we'll do a transfer a little bit slower because obviously it's got a lot more verts to go through but done we can hide the head uh, just put it on standard because i just did a correct combine on that and that's everything running so that is a combined head that's been um that's been built in terms of deformation directly from the head that has no uh, hair on it so all of the deformation of this is being taken over from here so again really good at transferring data across and managing data as i said the actual blend shape if you've already got a blend shape so if you added a new blend shape let's say you had uh, a master head and you'd added five more blend shapes to it if the head that you're transferring to already has that blend shape and you're just adding ones into it it will do that as well it basically looks and compares what's going on and what it needs to update and it will update the deltas for it so that's really useful now we said about layered stacks um let's just do a really quick one of that i want to keep this one quite short because we'll do a more detailed one uh, at another time so i'm going to import the body animation for this guy i'm going to delete the combined so in this case we have a body animation so this is our body data let's just get rid of all of these bits and bobs uh where's it gone models uh beard eyelashes let's get rid of those things <clears throat> okay so we've got a body animation which is just regular skinning so this this head is just skin to the neck joints and the head joints okay and what we want to do is we want to put the facial onto this now you can do that one of two ways you could effectively uh, do a separate skin pass where you include these neck joints and head joints into the facial joints and you have a single skin cluster that has all of that but it then means that when you want to alter seams and you want to alter neck seams you've then got to mess about with the facial skinning which is you know can be a bit problematic you could do a blend shape between the facial head and this head and then you've got a live blend shape between the two or you could do a stack and this is what we've been doing over the last year or so so what i'm going to do is this is our facial that we said previously so he's just sat in world origin doing nothing and obviously all the facial will run on that and what i want to do is transfer the deformation from that onto our body head that one there whoops no body head that one there onto this head and I'm going to do it as a stack so I'm going to do it front of chain front of chain basically means it's going to solve first so what we want to do is we want to have the facial solve first and then we throw it to the skin cluster for the um, body animation and the two will run on top of each other we'll show that in a minute I'm going to do it as a layered animation so this now means that whilst this head has already got a skin cluster on it it's going to add another one in the chain so you'll end up with two skin clusters and a blend shape in the stack 
Um, the former names, I'm going to say yes to that. And the reason for that is that we've already got a body skin cluster. So these are called facial skin clusters that have come from the source. And we, we want to maintain that. And we're going to do the connections. Done. Let that get on with it. <clears throat> Done. I can hide our original facial because we don't need that anymore. And now we've got the body doing its stuff. But we've also now got the facial running on top of that single mesh. So the mesh has got, if we inspect this is a little inspect button here. So we've got the blend shape, then we've got the facial. It says Xferd at the end, so we've got the blend shape for the facial, we've got the skinning for the facial, then we've got skinning for the body, and they're all running in one chain. And what that means is that the facial can live world origin. You can have a separate file, you can do all your skinning and stuff in the facial, not having to worry over its impact on the face on the body. And then you literally just chain those two skin clusters over. Um, in, in the Knuckles stuff that we did for the TV series, Knuckles has got uh, three skin clusters and I think four blend shapes in the chain as well as soft deformers and God knows what else. But this is how we did it. We have them as separate files and we pull them all together with the stack transfer. Um, and hopefully that gives you a good idea of, of the capability of this thing. Again, it's basic for taking data between meshes where you wouldn't normally be able to do it. Um, one, in, one interesting thing, incidentally, uh, if we go back to the facial file, let's just open that up, which is a good point to raise. <clears throat> if we want to chance transfer eyelashes, for example. So everything else is quite easy. Eyelashes aren't that easy. Let's just get rid of the brows. Just make it a bit more obvious and get rid of the brow and beard. Okay, so if we look at the eyelashes, because it's nearest point, and we look at these, these curling eyelashes will actually probably pick the wrong point. So if I do the transfer on this, and we'll go those two, and we'll go eyelashes. We don't need any of that. Uh, yeah, go. And we then do a blink. I suspect what will happen is that you'll get a rip in those eyelashes. Well, I know what will happen because I've set this up, obviously. So if I do this, you get a rip in the eyelashes. And why? That is because the nearest point to these polys is actually the upper, um, uh, the upper brow area, not the eyelid itself. So that becomes problematic. So what you can do is you can cheat it. What I've done is, let's just delete the deformation on there. Eyelashes, delete history. I've got a little transfer edge. So what I've done is I've duplicated a little edge of the eyes. Okay. And what I've actually done is I've dropped the skinning from the main head onto this um, this little fillet, if you like. And literally, again, it's literally a case of inspect, select to hit that and transfer. Oh, in fact, I haven't even transferred. So let's do that transfer, transfer that. So that little fillet will now do our animation. And because it's only a singular fillet and we're only looking at these verts, if we transfer the, um, the eyelashes to, from this object, you'll find that it will actually run. So if we do that, did that do it? Did I do that? was too quick. Uh, oh, no, I haven't selected them. <laughs> I've got to select them. Okay, done. Remove the fillet. And if we now try, those will do pretty much the right thing. I actually selected the wrong thing when I made, when I built this. But you get the idea. The idea is that you could actually just bounce data across. You could take um, only edge loops that you want to do and take the data between those edge loops. It just so happens I've picked ones that don't work particularly well. But that's another option you can do. But again, transferring data, not having to worry about vertex indexes, not worrying about, oh gosh, you know, the model has changed the model, we've destroyed our old blend shapes. It doesn't matter. This will do it for you. Um, okay, hope that's helpful. Like I say, I'll do a, a, another, def another uh, video where we go into a little bit more detail about how it finds what it's doing and, and um, maybe some, some more simplified objects. I just wanted to kind of get it out there. Um, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to follow us on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and go grab ProPack. Um, it's a huge tool now and it keeps growing. Um, thanks very much. Goodbye.